Hey guys, so people have always adored jewelry. Precious stones and metals ruled their thoughts. And even get this became the reason for some wars. Some were ready to give their lives for them, and others were ready to take those lives. Now, which precious gems and stones have almost always been the most valuable? Well, gold and diamonds, of course. We know what happens to gold. It's mined and melted and so on. But what path do diamonds take from the first shovel digging in the ground to a royal crown? Well, that's a big question. We'll try to tackle it here. Where are diamonds from? To start, let's discuss where diamonds are from and how they came to be in our planet's mines. So diamond is the hardest mineral in the world. There's a scale called the Mohs scale that measures an object's hardness. The scale has 10 points from talc at the bottom to diamond at the top. Diamond is the peak of hardness. Diamond is a crystal structure of pure carbon and is one of the most expensive stones. Transparent stones with a light blue tint are especially valuable. Now, discolorations are considered unattractive, but sometimes are also highly valued. So the main places diamonds are formed are areas in continents that have not had any geological activity for a long time. This process happens at great depths at about 60 to 120 miles underground. The temperature at those depths can reach 2,732 degrees Fahrenheit, and the pressure is over 40,000 atmospheres. It's that temperature and pressure that can change the crystal structure of carbon so much to make an almost fantastical stone. Of course, no one goes down that deep to mine diamonds since they gradually come to the surface over billions of years. They rise to the surface with volcanic magma. That creates the main birthplaces of diamonds. The definition of kimberlite pipes appeared after the first pipe of its kind was found in the Kimberley province in southern Africa. The pipes were called kimberlite pipes, and the stones containing diamonds are kimberlite. There are thousands of kimberlite pipes around the world, but diamond mining isn't profitable in a great many of those places. There are just a few dozen, actually, where it's reasonable to mine. How to find a birthplace of diamonds There's one huge problem for the diamond industry. Looking for diamond mines was usually done in secret, so we still don't know all the ways to determine their location. Of course, there are modern methods, but the people who mine diamonds aren't exactly rushing to share their secrets since they've got a lot of money in it. Now, the best chance to find diamonds is in areas with long extinct volcanoes. Those places often create a natural lab that has all the right conditions to grow these minerals and deliver them to the surface. Also, diamonds can be found at riverbed regions that carry a lot of magnetic rock. Even more attention is worth paying to meteors. There are often diamonds found where they land. How diamonds are mined. The hardest part of mining diamonds is having to process tons of ore. Usually, one ton of rock contained one to two carats, or 0.2 to 0.4 grams of diamond that even shrink more when cut. Diamond mining is sometimes possible to do manually, which is often possible in Africa. But generally, larger scale processing is required to go through the immense amount of rock. Overall, the technology is similar to gold washing. The question is how many minerals are in a rock and what type they are. Now, the simplest and least expensive way of mining is an open mine. First, the top layer of soil is removed. Then, the quarry gradually opens up through directed explosions in its walls. The rock is taken away to mining complexes on quarry trucks. Then they process the ore. These craters can often be hundreds of yards deep, with an area the size of small cities. Now, the second way is significantly more complex to do, and it is a closed mine. Mine shafts are dug for miners to work in. First, complex equipment is required to dig the tunnels, unlike the simple and comparatively cheap explosions. 
Second, there's not space to maneuver compared to the much simpler dig a hole and pull stuff out of it. Mine shafts are used when the open mine method won't work for one or another reason. They can be up to a half mile deep, sometimes more. Then the rock is taken up and sent to a mining complex. When an open mine can't be processed anymore and the quarry can't be expanded, mine shafts start being used. The shafts are dug vertically and on angles with less than 300 feet between them. The work continues as long as there's profit in it. Diamond mining is done in three seven-hour shifts and never stops. Mining towns are built nearby with all the necessary infrastructure, including hospitals, shops, gyms, and airports to support the industry. Sometimes you can only reach these places by air. How a mining complex operates Quarry trucks bring thousands of tons of rock to special complexes to process the rock and find diamonds in it. The rock passes through various systems of grinding and crushing. They're often different, but the idea is to break big rocks into small ones, then sort them by size in a screener, a special machine for sorting, and send them for further processing. Now, large chunks of rock are washed with water to obtain diamonds, and small ones are exposed to special reagents that pull diamonds out of them. The processed rock undergoes additional checks like X-ray separation. Diamonds shine on X-rays. This property is used to check the quality of the processed rock. Small flashes are determined by the machine and some of the rock is taken off the belt. Then it is sent for another check. Now when the diamond is gathered, there's still discoloration. So the manual labor begins. They are sorted by hand with the smallest extra rocks being removed. After that, the diamonds are checked and sorted according to tons of parameters to send them to special markets where they are bought by jewelers for further work and used in jewelry. How diamond, raw, differs from brilliance, cut diamonds. Many people call both diamonds, but the difference is one is a mined mineral and the other is a cut gemstone. While the mineral is still underground in a quarry truck or in a warehouse, it's a raw diamond. After it's processed, it's a brilliant or cut diamond. The Koh i Noor diamond. The most famous diamond today is definitely the Koh i Noor. It means mountain of light in Farsi. Legend says its first owner was a boy who was born several thousand years before the birth of Christ near the river Yamun. It wasn't just a boy, but the child of the sun Karn. The stone was a decoration for his hat. Throughout its history, the stone saw a lot of blood and changed owners many times until it became part of the British crown. It's now in the tower and is securely guarded. Many say the only appropriate price for the stone is the life of he who wants it. Well, that's all for today. Leave us a like, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you again next time.